this there video we're going to talk about making some sodium pure sodium and then from that some table salt let's talk about the sodium first some information sodium is an alkali metal it's number 11 on the periodic table it has high reactivity most people know this it floats on water not only does it burn but it's floating of course and this does not occur in nature as a pure form it's always mixed with something else so the common reaction we see when sodium hits water is as follows two sodiums plus two waters yields two sodium hydroxide plus h2 gas which if you've done this you can see that bubbling off and because of this sodium hydroxide it increases the ph and therefore that's why it's an alkali metal its melting point is 97.8 degrees celsius or 208 degrees Fahrenheit, which of course means if it wouldn't react with water, it would melt in boiling water. Sodium is absolutely necessary for life. In fact, whenever you get blood work done, they always check your sodium levels. And it has only one stable isotope. And because of sodium's high reactivity, whenever you're producing it, you need a way to protect it from water. The most common way is mineral oil, but you can also use toluene or kerosene. Both of these, of course, are flammable, and therefore the mineral oil is almost always used to be safe. Our materials for this are sodium hydroxide 12 grams magnesium 7.5 grams we need a fuse we need a steel container we need mineral oil of at least 50 milliliters and i would say probably 200 would be a safe bet and we need a brick so if we work this out sodium hydroxide 12 grams to 7.5 magnesium it turns out that for every one gram of magnesium we need 1.6 grams of sodium hydroxide. To produce our pure sodium, the reaction goes as follows. The sodium hydroxide plus magnesium plus a lot of heat yields free sodium and magnesium hydroxide. Our methods are as follows. It's pretty crude. We're going to take our steel container, which is this little tiny square down here, and at the bottom of that will be our magnesium and sodium hydroxide inside of the container. Then we'll have a fuse that goes from the mix to the outside, and while this is covered with a brick, to allow as little oxygen in here as possible. And essentially, when you light the fuse, it'll come down, it'll ferociously burn up this mix right here. You let it cool down and open it up, and you will have mostly a mix of pure sodium in there, mixed with a little bit of extra sodium hydroxide and magnesium. You immediately wanna pour mineral oil in there just to cover everything because that sodium will react very quickly to any moisture in the air. Interestingly, when we do our next step here, which is take all of the slag from here and dump it into this container right here. This container works the way we do it because of the different densities of the materials. So when we dump the slag in here, it's gonna come down and hit the water. The reactivity of the sodium tends to clean itself off because it is lighter than mineral oil, I'm sorry, water, it'll bubble up and land in the mineral oil layer, which is right here. And if you look at the densities, the mineral oil is 0.85 grams per milliliter. It's the lightest on the top. The sodium is 0.97 grams per milliliter. It fits right in the mineral oil because the water is 0.9998395 grams per milliliter. So that's actually accurate, but we round it to one gram per milliliter. So the heaviest is the water. The next layer will be the mineral oil and stuck in that mineral oil, oil hopefully will be our pure sodium. All of these reactions are done and these numbers uh, pertain to 20 degrees Celsius, which is basically room temperature. And finally, we need to pick out our tiny bits of sodium that landed in the mineral oil here and smash them together so that it's one clump of sodium because this is the sodium we're gonna to use to do our next step here, which is make salt out of it. So the next step of making table salt, sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Of course, there's a positive sodium and the negative chlorine. It's hygroscopic. It has a melting point of 800.7 degrees Celsius or 1,473.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now compare that melting point up here to just the sodium, just by adding the chlorine, which is a gas, to the sodium, you get this enormous melting point. Approximately 250 million tons are produced per year of uh, sodium, and most of this, of course, comes from mining. It's used in de-icing, and it works until temperatures are around a negative 10 degrees Celsius, because uh, below that, it's too cold for the sodium to actually melt the ice. And, kind of a funny note, but ear and eye drops contain 0.9% sodium chloride, because that matches our bodies. The blood and most fluids in our bodies are at almost 1% sodium chloride, so that's what they add to the ear and eye drops so that when you add them, you don't have any problems or stinging or burning, etc. Our materials for this particular part of the experiment, we need some solid chlorine tablets, usually coming from pools, actually. Uh, bleach also can work for this. We need 30% hydrochloric acid. I wrote down 200 milliliters. I have a feeling we're not going to need nearly this much, but just in case, 
We need our pure sodium metal, which we got back here when we smashed it together, and we need a torch. The reaction for this part of the experiment is two sodiums plus chlorine, which is Cl2 gas, yields two sodium chlorines or salt. In our methods here, we're going to take this smashed piece of sodium, put it into a small cup of sorts, and we're going to heat that until it melts. In a separate container entirely, I'm going to use a large Erlenmeyer flask. I'm going to put the pool chlorine tablets on the bottom, then pour in the hydrochloric acid, which creates chlorine gas pretty quickly. This is extremely dangerous stuff, so you need to do this outdoors or under a fume, fume hood that is exceptionally good. Um, once this is melted and good and hot, we're going to take that little cup, insert it through the opening of the Erlenmeyer flask, where the hot sodium reaches the chlorine gas, and a quite bright uh, reaction occurs and eventually when you pull this out you will actually have salt in there pretty remarkable so that's it for all of this and this so let's go make our sodium first and then from that make our table salt 12 grams of sodium hydroxide pre-measured seven and a half grams of powdered magnesium pre-measured I'm gonna grind each of these independently off camera just to ensure the highest probability of a reaction between the two I have my steel can right here and my NaOH and magnesium. I was about to pour them in when I noticed that on the inside of here looks like some plastic was put on the inside of this to keep the contents from the metal. And you can kind of see it right there, it kind of bubbled up. Anyways, I'm gonna keep this a lot, get rid of the plastic, burn it off, clean it up, and then I'll put these two items in there just so that the plastic does not get in the way of the reaction. Put the can on top of that Pringles to keep it upright as high as I could because when you take one of these and tilt it, sometimes the flame goes out. We'll see how long the Pringles can last for. Look at that. Good enough. A little elbow grease to sand and grind off the inside of this. It's pretty clean, I think. Satisfied with that. In goes the magnesium. And in goes the sodium hydroxide. I'm just gonna sift them back and forth a little bit to mix them. Insert a fuse. And we'll be outside next. I bent the fuse so it would stick out properly. And I have this relatively heavy tile I'm going to put on top like that. It's very flat on the bottom. And because it's probably not quite heavy enough, I'm going to put a dime on there. I think that should help. Just kidding. We're putting a toaster on it. There we go. All set. Now I'm just going to light it. Nice. we got to let it cool for maybe 10, 15 minutes. About 15 minutes here. So we'll remove the toaster, which is in great shape. Excellent. The dime survived, of course. The tile did, that's awesome. So I'm gonna take this off here. There we go. Just so you can see what it looks like right now. I'm gonna put this back on. I see the fuse is in there. I'm gonna go get some tweezers, remove the fuse. Good. This is just to prevent any of that sodium from reacting to any moisture in the air. Done. To show you what I mean why I'm using the mineral oil, I'm just going to scrape what the residue that's on the tile here on the underside. Okay, you get it. Because sodium uh, tends to burn faster in hot water and burns much slower in very cold water. I chilled down this distilled water here before I'm going to put it in here. So hopefully when the sodium drops through it, uh, it doesn't react violently. 150 milliliters of distilled water followed by our mineral oil, which is lighter than the water.
I spent about 10-15 minutes scraping the sides off of this in the bottom. It was stuck really good actually, more than I expected. But, so in here we have free sodium metal and we have the magnesium hydroxide and any leftover bits of either one to start with. So some sodium hydroxide and some magnesium. See if I can get this little piece out here uh, just so you can see it better. But it's getting harder to do than I thought. As we already talked about, sodium turns out to be just the right density to fit in the middle of the water and set in the mineral oil. So as I drop this in, it'll bob up on the water, but it won't bob up on the mineral oil. Okay, there goes a small piece. There are so many of these actually that are here that um, even with time lapse, this is not going to be an easy thing to do. So I'm gonna have to give me a couple here and then I'm just going to start doing this off camera. As I've gone along here, you can see there is a lot of residue on the bottom there mixed in with the water, but I can see clearly bubbles of nice sodium coming to the top there. So just wanted to show you this and I'm gonna keep going. Done adding all of the slag to this and you can see on the bottom there, magnesium hydroxide that's formed that is insoluble in water, especially cold water. So as much as you see there, that's magnesium hydroxide, at least that much has been turned into sodium on the top here, but this is still a mess. It's still bubbling away. And um, I'm going to have to wait a bit, let this set before I can sort of peel apart what's actually sodium and what's not. It's been a day, 24 hours, and how much this cleared up is incredible. You can see some blobs that seem to have stuck to the side and smaller ones in the middle there. From the side, you can see that. So I'm going to take these out. I would show this on camera, but I know that if I even push them in the water a little bit, they're going to start bubbling again. So, yep, I'm going to do that off camera, and I'll be back when I'm done. Well, this was kind of a pain, but thankfully there's some bigger pieces in there that you can see, some nice round balls of sodium. Um, but I'm gonna have to push this all into one piece, coalesce it together, so that we can go on to the next part of the experiment. So I'm gonna go do that, and I'll be back when I'm done. I finished smashing all the little pieces together. Most of this is, are the bigger pieces, and you can see a little of the little ones I did, but they were really hard to work with. Anyways, here's our sodium. Very happy with the result. I'm going to put this in some more mineral oil here as I want to save that. And we're going to move on to the second part of the experiment. Quick look at this one more time. So on the very bottom is a magnesium hydroxide insoluble. You can see a light layer of gray on top of that. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera or not, but that I think is unused magnesium. Then we have our water layer, which has any unused sodium hydroxide in there. And then, of course, the mineral oil layer, which had the sodium in there. So just wanted to go over exactly what was left over 40 grams of crushed pool tablets pre-weighed 200 milliliters of 31 percent hydrochloric acid pre-measured to start making our table salt i have everything laid out right here things you've already seen such as the crushed pool chlorine hydrochloric acid this is just an empty one liter flask here's our sodium i mashed it together into a little ball and this little thing i made quite a while back for a different experiment but what I'm going to do to start is just pick up our sodium here and put it into this little cup right here. Like so. Then when it's heated up properly over here, it's going to go in here where the chlorine gas will also be creating our salt. I'm doing this outdoors, of course, for obvious reasons. Uh, the chlorine gas will be coming through the top of that flask eventually. But I'm going to start by putting the powdered pool tablet chlorine in here. Because it's powdered, it's probably gonna create a rather dramatic swoosh when I put the hydrochloric acid in there. We'll wait until that clears out and then We'll start the rest of the experiment. In goes the hydrochloric acid. Make sure it doesn't bubble over. It's actually not that bad. Now, looks like we might have it bubble over a little bit.
going to add a little bit more. If it continues to bubble up, I'm going to have to put in less of everything. Okay, this is good. And it's green. All right, excellent actually. It's calmed down quite a bit. I'm going to remove the hydrochloric acid from the side here. Just a piece. And I'm going to heat the sodium chunk now and gently lower it in there. There still looks to be quite a bit of chlorine gas in there. That's why you mine for salt and you don't make it in a flask. It's pretty dramatic. And what do you know? There's our salt. Took a bit. Sorry, this thing is so darn springy. There you have it. We first made the sodium, then the chlorine, and combined them, and now we have a small cup of salt. Maybe with a little bit of rust thrown in there. Sodium chloride. Very, very cool. I would not put this on your food.